See this PC? Right now, it's 100% utilized. Can you hear it? I don't think so. Maybe you can hear a tiny little bit of a whiz in the background, but the main idea is that it's almost quiet, almost silent PC. So if you want to build yourself a quiet PC, or maybe you're a musician and you want to build yourself a DAW music production PC, then this video is for you. Do you know what else is for you? This sponsored segment from Squarespace helps you to take your business to the next level by creating your own web presence. Perhaps finally you can launch that passion project you've been putting off for so long. Creating a website through Squarespace is as simple as playing with Legos. They've got tons of high quality custom templates that you can adjust to fit your style. Whether you want to sell your product online, take bookings or have a professional online portfolio, Squarespace websites give you the access to all the important analytics and SEO tools to make sure that your story reaches as many people as possible. If you still feel like you need help with your website, Squarespace pride itself with 24-7 customer service. Learn more about Squarespace and their free trial in the description below. Go to squarespace.com forward slash Tech notice to get a 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Let's start with the motherboard as always because that connects all the pieces and then everything else kind of makes sense as we go through. So for motherboards, basically if you are a creator, musician really in particular, or someone who's like in the music production and you're looking for a door, <laughs> then basically what you want is a lot of connectivity depending what you know you connect to it and how much peripherals or sound cards or whatever you have there are but i have chosen this rog strix zx90a ddr4 just because this motherboard is still ddr4 and ddr4 is very very affordable at the moment mm -hmm. so how much are we talking here and you can get a lot of it for like pr pretty much half the price as DDR5. And for musicians, I don't think that, you know, that DDR5 is that big of a jump. But right now, if you asking me best bang for buck, DDR4 is the way to go. Now this motherboard here is the best DDR4 motherboard out there and it can be a little bit pricey and overkill for you. But if you're looking for something that has the best connectivity, then this one is the one. For DDR4 motherboard, this is like the best you can really get. And it looks quite nice as well. So so obviously it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in as well if you need to use that sometimes you know you don't quite have cable in the studio or something like that then this works for that as well if you want to know more about this motherboard then I highly recommend you go check out the actual review or overview of this motherboard where I went through every single like header of the motherboard and what does it do and what features does it have and so on one of the main reasons uh, I'm gonna get this one is this Thunderbolt header over here now there is no DDR for motherboards for Intel's 12th gen. And I can't live with that. That has Thunderbolt 4 ports in the back. And I know for musicians, sometimes the Thunderbolt uh, port is quite important just because of your, you know, sound cards or outside devices or something like that that need Thunderbolt connector. We're talking amps, electric guitars, maybe even lasers and smoke machines. So you can buy this separately or an extra card from ASUS if, if you require that. Now, if you don't need that, absolutely just use this one. You don't need that. But I just like that there is this feature over there. There is a Thunderbolt header. You can just put a Thunderbolt card there, connect it to that one, and you get Thunderbolt ports in the back of the motherboard, which is very, very nice. Apart from that, you're going to have very, very fast USB-C connectivity, like front panel and back panel. And like there's loads of ports, like everything you really need. That's, that's what you have over here. If you're looking for some other DDR4 12th gen motherboards, then I highly recommend you go check out the Gigabyte Aero G and motherboard. I've done another video on my channel about that. Very good other option. Slightly less features than this uh, ASUS one, but you might like the design of that one more. They're very, very similar. I think this ASUS is a little bit more expensive. There are some of the cheaper versions available as well from like MSI and so on. Also, if you might be watching this in the future and you're thinking, wait, look, DDR5 is very affordable. I want to go with DDR5. Maybe you want to go with DDR5 right now. Then there are really two very good motherboards that I recommend you check out. One of them is is a SUSE Z690 Creator Wi-Fi board, which basically has already Thunderbolt ports built into it. That's 10 gigabit Ethernet, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. So if you need that, it's all like built in. Very, very good Creator motherboard. Another board you might want to check out is Gigabyte Z690 Aero D. Not Aero G, but Aero D. They're two separate ones. And the Aero D has DDR5 and has like a lot of connectors there as well, like Thunderbolt. We have 10 gigabit Ethernet. So if you require that or need them, then, uh, you know, 
go check them out. But next up, the CPU then. I have chosen the i7-12700K from Intel. This is Intel's 12th gen and they have made massive leaps in performance since the previous generation. And this one is best bang for buck kind of high end uh, chip there. It has a lot of cores. It has 12 cores. So you do get a lot of cores if you need that because sometimes you know you have a lot of tracks, you have a lot of plugins and so on. You need a lot of CPU power. Another reason why this processor is very good and why you need a fast single core performance from your CPU is real time and low latency monitoring. If you want to have that in your music production PC or in your software, then it doesn't matter how many cores you have because that specific task only uses single thread off the core or off the CPU. So what you want to have is very fast single core performance. And that's why this CPU is very, very good. But if we go with the i9 version, then we're gonna start to enter a world where cooling might be an issue. And if you want it to be silent in the studio, that could be an issue. Now you can upgrade to i9, you might need to change the cooling a little bit or go with liquid cooling and so on. But my goal here is to get as much performance as possible while being very, very quiet. Because I think for musicians that's extremely, extremely important. That's the problem. So this one here offers 12 cores and we also have efficiency cores here, which means that you're going to use very, very little amount of power if you're not doing very CPU intensive things, which actually in Ryzen side, if we went with Ryzen 5000 series or now in a moment Ryzen 7000 series, by the time you're watching this, Ryzen 7000 might be out already. But then we still have no, no efficiency cores. Now I know it's a little bit more efficient process node, like five nanometer from TSMC, but not to get too technical, these efficiency cores allow the CPU to idle at very, very, very low wattages. I have done a test between the i9 12900K and Ryzen 5950X and the 12900K actually in like mixed workloads long term uses much less power than actually the Ryzen 5950X, which I think is very important these days because of the electricity prices and where we go in there. And if you want to downgrade this, you can go with 12600K or 12400, it's still very, very good. Now feel free to check out also the non-K variants for this um, if you have them very much cheaper. I'm gonna leave them in the description below if you want to check them out. So now the RAM and how much of this are we gonna be using? So I am using this a gigabyte creator or des designer memory. Now I think this is very, very hard to find these days. And uh, I have this laying around and think this will fit inside this kind of color theme. And the reason we're going with this is because first of all, 64 gigabytes, which I think is very, very important for you as a creator, musician, sound engineer, because most likely if you're doing some very complicated soundtracks or mixing, you might have absolutely tons, sometimes hundreds of tracks. That's why you need a lot of RAM. So this over here is a 64 gigabyte kit. So one DIMM is actually 32 gigabytes. The speed of this is 3200 megahertz CL16. And you might be saying, hey, 3200 megahertz, that's not very fast. Well, it's true. If you want to actually upgrade this, there is plenty of white kits available that you can get 3600 megahertz from Team Group, from Corsair, from other manufacturers. I'm going to leave a few options in the description below so you can like kind of get the best bang for buck at the time you're watching this. Just check out all the links. Okay, this is the cheapest, looks the nicest. I want maybe RGB. I don't want RGB. Go with that one. Now, I think this build specifically is going to be very RGB less to just keep it, you know, nice and tasty. Then we have to think about the storage. And for our storage configuration, as always, I recommend people or creators to have programs drive. So this is the main drive where the programs are going to live on and operating system. And this is going to be the top drive over there. And that's connected directly to the CPU. And for that, we're going to be using this Cardia Z440. So this is a Gen 4 NVMe drive. It's actually very, very affordable and very good speed. Asus has these cool like latches over here so you can actually install the SSD without any tools. Boom, just move that and there we go. So this is one terabyte in size and that should be plenty of space for all your programs. Depending how you like your programs configured, you might want to have a little bit bigger in terms of capacity, like a two terabyte version or so on. If you have a lot of, for example, assets or, you know, libraries, music libraries or different effects and so on that you want to have on the OS drive as well, 
which I don't recommend. I'd recommend you have a secondary um, SSD where you load all assets, whether they're you know music or video or photo files, depends what you're doing. In our case, musicians, if you have like a music library, effects library, and so on, have a secondary drive. For that, I highly recommend this silicon power uh, SSD. So this is the US 70 drive. You can use uh, like one terabyte version of this as, as the OS drive as well, but I just don't have two of these drives available because what this drive is very good at doing is giving you like the best bang for buck performance. It's Gen 4 speeds of NVMe speeds. So you get about 4.5 gigabytes per second read and write speeds plenty fast and it has very high terabytes written spec so for that spec you can't really find the drive that is a better price and speed so this drive can be rewritten a lot of times i think the one terabyte version has 1800 terabytes written spec which means that uh, this drive can be rewritten um i think let's do the calculations math 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 98% of the drive can be rewritten every single day for the next five years, which is absolutely ridiculous spec. And I don't think anyone is gonna do that, especially musicians. I don't think you're gonna have that many files or that many big files. And I will tell you why, Joe. Gabe. Gabe. It's very, very durable, basically. It's a bit more written-centric drive if you write a lot of files. Heat sinks off. By the way, if you don't feel confident building your own PC and or maybe you've never built a PC before but you'd like to build a, like a like a DAW or you'll create a PC, then I highly recommend check out the PC building tutorials that I'll leave in the description below because in this video I'm kind of breezing through this but there's much more in-depth what to do before and after and like hardware and software afterwards, how to configure it out, I'll leave it in the description below for you to check out. Next up, we need to cool the CPU down and for that reason, I have something that I'm very excited about. This is the Noctua NHU-12A cooler. And this is uh, probably one of the best silent coolers that you can get while looking absolutely stealth and giving you a super, super good uh, cooling performance. When it gets to like professional coolers, like really, really good quality, good warranty, this is this is like one of the best out there. So we're gonna go air cooling for this one because we don't want to worry about like liquid cooling or like have extra pump noise there as well. Because when you're in the studio, you're gonna start to hear that pump noise because that pump noise is very different from the fan noise. So this is gonna be very, very just slap it on there. Forget about it. Forget about it. It's gonna cool it down absolutely no problem. Now, if you do think this is slightly pricey cooler for you, I'd recommend checking out Thermal Ride Peerless Assassin. I'm gonna leave that in the description as well, which you can get a little bit cheaper and you actually have a white option as well. If you want RGB perhaps or white, then you know, you've got that option there. Okay, for LGA 1700 uh, mounting kit, what Noctua recommends to do is have five dots of uh, thermal paste. It is included in the cooler box and it's a very, very good thermal paste. So what you want to do is have four smaller dots around the edges like that. And then one smaller pea size in the middle there. Okay, it's a very tight fit over here uh, with this cooler, just because if you look from the upper part here, you can see that this heat sink over there or the heat pipe over there is actually heating uh, or hitting this uh, kind of plastic cover on the side of um, this motherboard there as well, but it does fit. Look at the actual style of this cooler. It looks so, so cool. It's like just like a big square block on top of it. That's fantastic. It's very tight fit. It fits just above around this because it's got very beefy heat sinks, this uh, motherboard as well. So when talking about cases, 
I have the Fractal Pop Silent Case. This is one of the latest cases from Fractal and it's a silent case. So basically what that means is you've got a little bit of sound dampening on the front and on the side here and then you've got a bit more solid panels there. So I'm curious to see how well does this perform but really if you trust the marketing then this case should be a little bit more silent than the Airflow version. If you do want to check out the, the comparison of this versus the Airflow version then hit that subscribe button because uh, I'm curious what does this versus the Airflow version look like. As you can see, I've taken the side panel off. We've got this material over here, sound tampening material to make it quieter. Over here as well, like a soft, squishy material that kind of dampens the sound. It's got sound dampening on here as well. So it sucks the air in from the side there. It's quite a big gap and then pulls it through and then pushes it inside the case. It also has this cool little compartment on the bottom there if you want to put your USB sticks there or I don't know, use it for something cool. Since we're going for the very quiet build, I want to use and replace those fans, included fans inside the case here. We're going to use exactly the same fans that we have on the cooler. So these are the Noctua A12 X25 PWM fans, 120 millimeters and probably one of the best fans in the world. So these are very, very quiet and very, very just good performance fans. So let's take those fans off and put the new ones back on. Before I'm going to put the motherboard in, I'm actually going to take out our PSU here and I'm going to install the PSU uh, cables on the motherboard just because it's going to be easier in there because it might be a little bit of a tight space. So when we're talking about PSUs, which PSU should you go for? I highly recommend you go check out my PSU buying guide. But one of the main things for me is the power efficiency now, especially in the Western world because of the electricity prices, which this one has a very good power efficiency uh, rating. This is 80 plus uh, platinum rating. This is by the company FSB. So it's very, very good quality, high quality power supply, modular. So you don't need to have any extra like cables inside and so on. But there's plenty of other ones you can get as well. I'm gonna leave them in the description below. I highly recommend you go check out the PSU buying guide because you're gonna get very good information there which one to actually buy and not to buy a bad one because sometimes you can get even a one that explodes. A boom! Big old explosion! Some like confetti comes down. By the way, I do want to mention very importantly, changing the fans for this case is not actually required. You can completely use this included fans. They will be slightly louder, but you know, they're completely okay if you don't want to spend extra on these fans, which are a little bit expensive. Interestingly, this PSU comes with a very interesting CPU cable. So it has already eight pin connected and then also has four plus four pin coming out from the eight pin as well. So you kind of need only one cable for the CPU rather than two. Now, ideally you would have two because I think one connector is still rated to 150 watts, but I think that will be plenty for us. So we don't need to really worry about that for daisy chaining these two together. <music> Let's put the PSU in. Obviously I'm gonna put it upside down, meaning the fan is underneath, so it pulls in cold air from underneath and makes the inside of the case a little bit more cooler. And since this is a musician PC, a music PC, DAW, whatever you wanna call it, then often the GPU is very much like overkill in this scenario because you don't really need the GPU for anything. And if you are just running maybe one monitor or two monitors actually, I think this motherboard has two video outputs, then you don't even need a GPU. You can just use the iGPU of the CPU and just run the monitors on the motherboard and you don't need the, the GPU. That is so punk rock. But we're going with the RTX 3050 from ASUS. So this is very small card. It's still way powerful enough to drive like four 4K monitors if you want. Very quiet. It looks small, stealth, all that we want. Very power efficient as well. So we're not gonna make that much, you know, kind of heat inside the PC. Obviously, if you want to use the PC for something else as well as the music 
and some other applications may use a GPU more than just music production, then by all means, go and get a more powerful uh, GPU. But in our case right now, this is well like above what we actually need. And it's, it's, it's just enough. Now let's do a little bit of the cable management, plug in the cables, and then, you know, it's time to turn the PC on. Okay, there we go. We are in the um, BIOS now. Let's have a look. CPU temperature, 30 degrees. Very good. Oh, the RAM there. We have 64, 65 gigabytes of RAM, 12700K. Okay, looks like everything is now sorted. So next up, what we are gonna do is actually configure the fans, update the BIOS, install Windows, and then we're gonna get back and then actually measure the quietness of the PC and how well do the thermals work with this PC. If you don't know how to uh, configure the fans and make them optimal actual quietness and loudness, then I highly recommend you go check out my, um, you know, how to configure fans video and the stress test as well. If you want to stress test your PC, try to say that many times in a row, stress test your PC, stress test your PC. I'll have to buy a longer HDMI cable because uh, it's very short and that's the longest one I could find. So sorry about that, just running through the shot. I tried to get it underneath, I can't, but if you want to show you the PC, uh, that's what I have to do. And when I'm rolling in the Benjamins, I will throw you and your dog a bone. So basically uh, everything is configured now and it is super, super quiet. Like when I'm in quiet, I can't hear it, okay? Because I've got a little fan in the back over there just to cool me down because it's 27.7 degrees here in the room at the moment. It's a very, very warm. But what I want to know is how good is the actual cooling of this PC now then. So let's let's have a look at that. So basically the GPU, that's not gonna give us a lot of heat because I think it's 135 watts or something like that. We're gonna do one multi-core. I just wanna see what's going on here. So what, what are we gonna pull through here? 162 watts, 165 watts, 164 watts, and we are 81, 82 see i still can't hear it bear in mind this is 27.6 degrees celsius here in this room which is very very warm so to get these temperatures i'm quite happy and i have tuned them down so that like they wouldn't make any noise at all 167 watts and we're 89 see now it is warmish okay but it's completely within the margin of like what it can be and uh, completely within the spec, you know, so we shouldn't really be worried about it. Now I'm going to let it run for another five minutes to see what the maximum temperature will be so we can really see um, what's going on. So I've let it run for about five minutes now and then basically each run it kind of maxed out a 90C, 96C. But now I've put like the fan speed as like standard right now. And then after putting like a better fan curve on just on this armory crate here, for example, we put standard, which means I can really hear it. So when I'm actually throttling it, I can hear it. So this is standard. It's not even turbo. And then now let's see what we're maxing out at. Let's have a look. 89, 90. Look, 87, we're in full on speed. 89, 90. So it would have been about 90 C in terms of the max temperature for this if if I'd add, uh, you know, leave this a bit of a better fan curve on, which you can do as well, you know, if you configure them to be silent, but then when I'm throttling it, you know, but I'm letting it go like hot until like 96, you know, and, and it's, I think 100% fan speed comes only when it's like 100 degrees Celsius, which I'm running very, very, very close to the red line but the whole purpose for this is to be silent because most of the time you're not going to do this especially if you're like a musician and you're doing like you know audio things this is this is very very synthetic and you're not going to see this performance in real world even if you're encoding video rendering videos you're not going to see that type of performance there so i'm very happy with the performance there in like this scenario this case there i think these nocto fans are very very quiet and like they just they just work very really well as well as this uh, um, cooler and now look at this like when we are at idle let me take this armory crate off as well so have a look at this cpu package power here at the moment 
can you see eight watts six six watts used will it go lower than that 6.2 watts that's because of the efficiency cause and that just shows how little amount this uses um five watts there 5.6 something like that which is absolutely ridiculous how low it can go in terms of the power consumption so when you're idling you know talking to your talent or whatever in the booth it uses so little energy and cools itself so well down and you know, it's just very energy efficient as well as powerful and, and cool. If I would measure this uh, PC right here, because my room is not obviously soundproofed, you can hear some, you know, police, you know, running on the street outside or something like that. I, I can't hear this PC because everything else in this room will be louder. I have to put my ear against the back fan and then I can hear the PC. Like, even from about a few inches away, it's silent. It's completely silent. And uh, I'm happy. So then, in conclusion, if you want to build yourself a quiet musician PC, have a look at this PC and the specs of this one. Very important thing that I do want to mention to you that isn't included with this PC that usually is included is a front panel USB-C port, which you do have to pay extra from Fractal and then you can install it there as well because at the moment it's just like a dummy one over there. So there's no USB-C port there, which I wish it was included as well because that would make it just 10 out of 10. But, you know, it's just a little thing. And uh, I don't know if this is going to be useful to you, but it's very easy to, uh, you know, store some things over here. Guitar picks, I don't know, even some strings you could fit in there, I guess. Just a cool little storage. I like that it doesn't have a lot of RGB and it's just kind of like a PC, you know, let's work on it. It looks cool. It's very, very minimal as well. Not sure if you like that type of thing, but I'm, I'm quite a big fan of this. And I like the little bit of an accent of purple in there, kind of, you know, makes it nice. But other than that, I'm just I'm just really happy with it. It's so nice to work with quality components because then you get like some good stuff. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to pick up any of these parts, you can find them in the description below as well. Thanks guys for watching. See you soon. Bye bye. I believe that the children are the future.